Welcome inside another edition of JD's vlog. What's up? It's your boy JD, and this is Under 30 Minutes. He's known throughout the world as a music ambassador for Trinidad and Tobago. He holds the honor of having that song that took us to the World Cup in 2006 with a music catalog that spans over 20 years of hits. His music was even featured on Xbox games and PlayStation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today on Under 30 Minutes, we have MX Prime. MX Prime. Blessings. Thank you so much for being on JD's vlog. This is under 30 minutes. Now, it's an understatement. It's a disrespect almost. So forgive me because you definitely need more than 30 minutes. But thank you for being on the show. Not a problem. MX. Let's just get straight into it, right? Eh? You're talking new album. And the name of it is Exit. Exit. Yeah. Why Exit? What's the story behind well, this name? Exit is what you would call an abbreviation of my son's name, Xavi X Ignacio I T Thomas, his surname. So the inspiration behind the entire project was based on him. You know, eight years ago I became a dad and my life basically changed, literally. Um, I started working a little bit harder on myself, you know, trying to get fit, trying to stay healthy. And children kind of bring a new drive, a new energy, a new life into your life. And he has done that for our family. So, it felt right to name the album after him. Mm -hmm. Something of a legacy. So no matter how long he lives, you know, he could say that his dad did something dedicated to him, was inspired by him. This is your what album? This would be my third album. I did. Third. First one, second? First one would have been From a Distance. Second one would have been. No, this is my fourth album. Fourth. First album was From a Distance. Second was Man of Fire. Third was Love Generation. And this is the fourth. You've been in the music business, I would say, what, over 20 years? Clearly. Would be 26 this year. You're not the type of artist to put out an album every year or every other year. You're, and you're a producer. Yeah. I would think you could produce an album every year. Mm -hmm. Why not every year? Why not more albums from MX Prime? Why now for this one? Well, why I didn't produce an album after 2005 or 06 was based on the fact that I wasn't really inspired to do an album because I was doing so many singles. You know, I felt that that was the way to go. Um, doing an album is tough. You know, it takes a lot out of you. You know, schedule may have been busy through touring or doing other things, and it just felt that it was a massive undertaking, you know, when you did it, right? Mm -hmm. um, the outcome is always good to see that you have all this body of work, one place where people can purchase and really get to know you musically at this particular time and moment in your career and in your life. But 
for some reason I was kind of uninspired by just doing all this body of work and in the end only two or three songs will play off the album anyway in the right. climate that we were in but right. now you know it's a different time with the Spotify and all the different you know places that you could put your music right. up for sale so I felt now was the time during the pandemic where I could sit down and really do music that I was feeling I knew I could do I know I could create and put forward to the public. You have so many meaningful, inspirational, festive, different moves of moods of songs um, compiled in albums before. Yeah. What's the difference with this one? We want to stay on the album thing right now because we in album mood. Right. Um, this album, I just felt that, you know, based on being around my kid. Um, listening to what he listens to and he listens up uh, you know all kind of different types of music different genres um, but what I wanted to do is something a little bit more you know in your face something a little bit more raw uh, something that I didn't do before on album which is kind of more or less stay away from what people are custom hearing from okay. me right okay. and because I became a producer I don't wake up in the morning thinking about doing a festive song or a carnival song. I just wake up and be inspired by music on a whole. I listen to a pop song and be inspired by that. A reggae song, a dancehall song, an EDM track because I'm a part of a group called Ultimate Rejects which of course. we primarily do EDM music mm -hmm. for the most part. Only, you know, you know, only the soca is being featured at this point in Trinidad but what we do is EDM. So with all that going on inside of me musically, I felt that this project should not have been what people are accustomed hearing. Right, right. How much songs on the on the on this album? Exit? Uh on Exit there are twelve songs. Oh you went nice and yeah. Nice uh, and a tight. song for every month of the year. <laughs> <laughs> what is the marketing strategy behind this? I know you always have strategies. If you know MX Prime on the Instagram, you always have strategies. Where can folks get this? What's the vision behind it? Um, the, well, the strategy for now, um, what I've been doing is actually previewing people with the instrumentals of the song. Sometimes people may not nice. be attracted by, you know, what the name of the album is, right? Or, or you. You know, some people probably just not into you, but when they hear a beat or they see a visual, it attracts them. So it, it, it compels them to be curious and to search a little bit more. So every day I try to tease them with an instrumental, right, and remind them where they can get the album because it's streaming on all the major platforms. We're talking Spotify, we're talking SoundCloud, we're talking um, iTunes, um, Apple Music, everywhere. 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 Do you ever feel pressured? competing with your last big song and um, how is how, how important is a hit song to you these days everybody if you don't have a hit is nothing what are your thoughts towards hit song and do you feel pressured competing with your last success well i don't feel pressured competing with my last project or major hit if you want to call it that because every song is a rehearsal for another big song simply put right the performance that you put out today at work right on the football field right in the in the operation if you are a surgeon right it's a rehearsal for your next assignment beautiful so for me music is all about learning sometimes you put out a record and it resonates well with everybody and then you put out another record and it doesn't do so well that's because it's appealing to a different audience a nice. different mood, like a different that. energy, and you are putting something that is meant to be different in the same place where people have already accepted what they accepted before. Right. They may not be in the same mood that you're in musically, so they won't accept that in the same way. Yeah. yeah. So one has to understand. Okay, if you're pitching, um, if if there are vegans here, you can't come around people with pork. <laughs> True. Simply put. True. Right? So there's no need for you to, you know, be despondent or to despair, right? You just know that wherever you're marketing certain things, you have to find those people, find that audience, and feed them that. And as I say that, because just for an example, right now, I believe, I was scrolling on the Instagram, and scores of people, as far as the eye could see, you could hardly see the DJ, 
the big screen is not even big enough and there's your music being featured and hundreds of thousands of people you know um, enjoying the music and you may not hear that particular song down here so it yeah. just adds to what you were saying yes there um, I think more misunderstandings because you know we grew up in a time where you learn to have respect for your elders you speak to people a particular way and times have changed where people communicate differently right. so I am a person that I deal with manners and respect I deal with good morning good evening and good night Mm -hmm. If you start your conversation with you, right, you better had, had known me since we were babies or we go through the battles with one another. Yeah. But yo, I will simply say, ah, morning, I don't respond to you, I respond to good mornings. And some people are offended by that. Yes. Right? And another thing, I am not responsible for this, the aesthetics. Blame DNA blame my mother and my father for this face yes. so some people will see this face and say that's not a friendly face and will draw their misconception from that from that maybe i should have been better looking where people would have seen me no, but use a handsome, i mean come on use a handsome don't like, that, many people know that don't me that, that, no, yeah, no. Don't <laughs> me that fans um have you learned to how, how do you deal with fans i've been in your because i mean it, my page knows we are friends yeah and i've looked up to you and learned so many things from you how you deal with fans on the whole fans women coming up to you they screaming they think people fans yeah. sometimes could be disrespectful yeah. yeah how have you learned to deal with fans in your early days and fans now? well sometimes we might see it as disrespectful but they are just excited and sometimes they just don't know what to say and in breaking the ice one may say something just like in any situation that someone will take the wrong way and we've learned over a period of time how to deal with people because i am providing a public service right so sometimes you may not be in the best of moods and people catch you at, on an off moment and you may say th something that may last a lifetime in someone's memory right and if that has ever happened we beg forgiveness because we're all humans right. um, learning to deal with fans i am very gracious for the fans that i have the supporters that i have um, I treat them with the utmost respect and I ex expect that to be reciprocated because at the end of the day, we all are human beings. You may look at a person as a celebrity and be inspired by that individual and then meet them personally and be disappointed with them as a person, mm -hmm. right? But we all are human beings, we want to make mistakes, we aren't perfect, and, but I'm gracious for the fans that I have because without them, we wouldn't be having this, this conversation today. Right, correct. The all-new Island Waters Global is a superior quality purified drinking water. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me my water. Island Waters. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me my water. Island Waters. Quality, clean, fresh water. It's what I need. Island Water. Does it for me? Island Water. Does it? It all time. The all new Island Waters Global. Get yours today. MX Prime, you have accomplished so much in your career and your life, and I want to separate them. What is your biggest accomplishment in your career? And what is your biggest accomplishment in your life personally as a man? The biggest accomplishment in my career has not come yet. Wow. So everything that you see as great, which I am grateful you, for. And you, are, you, you have a whole heap of greatness. Right? Which I'm grateful for. Uh, thanks to God and all the support, you know, from the fans and the supporters, the producers, the DJs, everybody in the industry that I've worked with to accomplish some of these goals. The greatest accomplishment, like I said earlier on, we are rehearsing for something bigger. Mm -hmm. Right? That has not come as of yet because I'm a person that doesn't, I'm not easily satisfied. Mm -hmm. As far as the biggest accomplishment in life, Mr. Xavi, Ignacio, I know, Thomas. Yeah, I know it was going right there. You love your son. Yeah, <laughs> biggest accomplishment. And, you know, he is responsible for changing not only my life, 
but my wife's life as well, you know, to getting us a little bit more glue together, more focus, you know, on what we need to do in life. Because sometimes we take our parents for granted. We think that they're going to always be there until they're no longer there. Mm -hmm. And all we have now is memories, right? The things that they taught us, the things that they, they, they scolded us for, disciplined us for, you know, and the just the conversations, you know, I could remember going to my son's sports day in the National Stadium and he is pointing and I'm up in the last row and he is pointing to show people that is his father up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that when I was a kid, but we were strong enough to know that our parents were working hard. And when we come home with a medal, we say, hey, daddy, I want this, mommy, I want this, and they would be happy that we want something, mm -hmm. right? But kids nowadays, they need their parents to be around them, them as long and as much as possible. So, my greatest accomplishment thus far. As you mentioned, wife, shout out to Jade. Um, I think a lot of people don't know. It's almost like you're mysterious to some people. They may not see, um, you know, your wife in, in pictures here, there, and, and that kind of thing. Is that a plan or, or, or that just comes natural how you all... That's a natural vibe, you know. At the end of the day, um, my wife is a person. She is more popular than I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's more popular than I am. Right. Like, naturally. My, my, I am in a business where I'm supposed to be popular, but I'm very unpopular yeah. or mysterious because I choose to be that particular way. I wouldn't pose that much. I would go to events and be in a corner like a spider. Yes. And it's only when it's time for me to perform, go and perform and, and immediately erupt, leave. Erupt the stage and immediately leave. You know, that's just, that's just me, you know. And um, I think that comes with my personality from ever since I was a kid. We develop a personality and we bring that into everything that we do. Mm -hmm. I think if I was, you know, like really out there for cameras to see, I would try to hide from the camera every time. If the camera, the camera comes to me, I would always like make a U-turn. Mm -hmm. But this is the life that I chose. This is the career that I chose. This is what God had for me, you know, and for every man who has a blessing and has a calling. You know, don't run from it. You know, you may tussle and turn and fight with it, but what is for you is for you. What comes naturally to you, that's what you need to go with. Under 30 minutes, where is the ideal place you want to see yourself? I mean, it's the same as asking, where do you see yourself in the next five years and 10 years? But what is the end goal for MX Prime? Um, first of all, there's no end goal because we want to keep going. Um, for me, when I discovered my, my, my love and my talent for music, it was never about, okay, you're going to be this type of artist, you're going to win these awards, you're going to make this amount of money. I would just wanted to create. My, my, my happy place, if you want to call it that, is being in the studio, building beats, right, and just coming up with ideas for amazing songs. Whether or not you will be the person singing these songs, mm -hmm. it's just to create. So, for me, having a huge or a state-of-the-art studio is right. good enough for me and the wife and son can take the rest of the house, right? For me to be able <laughs> to create, right, so that I can always keep this mind active because when this body starts, starts to fail us, right, and we could no longer climb a stage and perform and, and belt, you mm -hmm. know, hard for people to hear, we could still create or have someone there interpret our creativity and broadcast it to the world most memorable and then we're going to get into something that i call rapid questions yeah all right but this is before the rapid questions most memorable performance ever and that could be a tough one for you um not really that tough um really most memorable performances would be and a lot of people may think about recent times but i would say performing at the old Nuremberg Stadium outside at the FIFA World Cup in front of over maybe 60,000 Europeans of all nations. That's when you had when we um, went, um, the When we Cup. went to the World Cup and I performed Love Generation there. When we said love. Yeah, 
best fighter was but was I Gwendo was well. Good. I know gonna but, ask how you in but sick. love generation all the other artists from Trinidad and Tobago who were on the cast. Right. That was the first time they actually listened to Love Generation. Right. Many of them came up after and said, we didn't know about this song. How is the people, how are these people singing this song? I said, well, outside of what we are accustomed to, the people embrace music in a different way. If it has something in it, melody-wise, words-wise, that is resonating, these people will sing it back. They will hold it inside. Yeah. So if I keep back my energy based on whatever bias, or whatever preconceived notion I have, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be reciprocated. So when I went out there and I sang Love Generation, and I saw people clapping their hands and singing, when we say love, I said, wow. While I was singing, I was, I was in awe. Mm -hmm. The next performance would be in the National Stadium before we played Mexico in that crucial game which we won to go to play Bahrain. Right, when I right, performed right. before, <laughs> right? And my old P teacher was there when I woke up the stairs after the, 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 oh. the performance. He looked at me because he knew me since I was 11 years old. Right. He said, my son, I am Oh, that, that is a proud moment for a teacher, you know. Because I've known you all your life. <laughs> and to see my students, my children, you say, yourself and Michelle Sylvester, I'm very proud of you, you guys because we went to Diego Martin Jr. Secondary. Shout out Diego. I am, I am proud of you. And that moment was like one of the best moments for me as a performer. Rapid questions, Mac, MX. I keep calling him Max. Max, Max is school. Max is school. That's, all right. that's the name. Nice, nice. Rapid questions. If you were booked to sing at the Grammys and you have one song to do out of your avalanche of music, documented music, the hit songs, what song would that be? That's a tough one. One song, you know? Tough song. Um, one song. You know how much songs you have? I have no <laughs> idea. I have not even checked. <laughs> Listen, one song in the Winnie Grammys. One song in the Grammys, Love Generation. That, 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 that. Listen, people, go back and listen to Love Generation if you have never heard that song before. That is a real, not, that is a real bringing people together type of song. Yeah, Love Generation. Favorite food? Favorite food? <laughs> Rapid. Mashed potatoes with tuna. Favorite color? Red. One destination you have to live other than Trinidad and Tobago. Hmm. I feel it would be Italy. Italy? Yeah. Nice. Rapid questions. What are the fears of MX Prime, if there are any? The fear of. Have any fears? Fear of. Fear of not um, achieving what that's in my mind that I want to achieve. The fear that. We don't, we don't know the time, we don't know the minute or the hour. You right. know, my fear is running out of time. So I thank God for every minute on the face of the earth. Top three songs of all time. My... Your personal top, top three. Well, whoa. I don't think I might be able to answer that. You can give a top three artists. Top three artists. Um, Michael Jackson. This help people define to understand the mind of. Yeah. I think music has a lot to do with that too. Yeah, Michael Jackson, Robert Nesta Marley. Hmm. Um. Who else? After well, with both of them, that is enough music for me. Right. Um. The great Whitney Houston. That is a perfect list, right, you know, bro. I mean, of course, others would have the top three, but that's a. That's a perfect top three right there. Yeah. Most embarrassing time. Most embarrassing time? Woo! Falling off a stage. But I got shocked. Oh, oh you, had a, you had a fall off stage? I f yeah, I got shocked. You let shock? Yeah, I got shocked. Because, like, something on the stage wasn't grounded up properly and I touched a piece of metal. Oh, gosh. And if it wasn't for this hair, in this particular style, I might have been a paraplegic. Wow. Thank God for your life. We're getting ready to wrap up here, MX. 
Congratulations on your brand new album. Thank you. Again, um, let people know what they can expect when they go to get Exit. When you listen to Exit, listen to it with an open mind. Listen to topics because it's based on a couple of things. Well, a few things. You know, the ladies have four songs that are dedicated to them. Nice. Right? The streets have something dedicated to them. Um, people who like to dance, there's something for them as well. And it's just a reflection of where I am musically and personally, you know. Never mind the genre, always respect what the artist and the individual is saying. Because there are certain modes of transport that one has to use to convey a message. If I have to get to a certain point in a certain time, I, I, I can't use a boat. I will use a plane, right? True. So, there are different modes of transport that we use as artists. Exit is a reflection of where I'm at, who I'm around, what I feel musically, not as, a, as, as just an artist or a singer, but also as a producer and a songwriter and a citizen of the globe. MX, thank you for being on the 30 Minutes. We love you and we wish you all the best. And you thank know we you always keep you in prayer. Yes, MX sir. Prime, ladies and gentlemen. My name is JD, on the 30 Minutes.